Okay, so we're going to try our first attempt here at a Star Trek Attack Wing Tactica video. And we're going to be spending our time talking about mines. Lots of lots of mines in this game. And with the introduction of the uh, Galgathong, we've uh, got three different kinds of mines that all work very differently and have very different tactics involved. So let's talk about the three sets of mines that we have. We have cloak mines. Nuclear warheads and antimatter mines. And while all three sets of mines do similar damage, they work completely differently, come up in different phases of the game, and all require different tactics. Which I think is really cool. They've added so much variety into the mines uh, in this game. So the first, the three phases that you have are the cloak mines, which happens during the planning phase. And its most important wording is during. That means if you place your, your uh, cloak mines, it's before you move, and your opponent is, allowed, is still allowed to reset their dials if you place them, because it's still during, not at the end of the planning phase. So the planning phase technically isn't over, and they can change their minds. So that's something to think about when placing cloak mines, is your opponent gets to change their dials still, if you do so. And then we have the nuclear warheads, the new ones, which happen at the end of the activation phase. So this is your action. And then when all the actions are done, uh, then you place these mines. So again, it's different phases of the game, different things happen, but um, it's still uh, very good and requires very different tactics than the uh, cloak mines. And lastly is the any manner mines, which is an attack, which is your attack for that round. And they all have various uh, limitations on them. So let's talk about it. Here we got my nice little USS Equinox here. That's a good demonstration. So let's say, okay, the cloak mines are tech, while these two are weapons. So they also take different slots, which I think is kind of cool. So let's talk about cloak mines. Cloak mines happen during the planning phase. You may discard this card to place a minefield token within range two of your ship in any direction, but not within range two of an enemy ship. So, this is your restriction that they have to be complete, that they have to be within two. The nice thing about the rules and the facts, if you've read them, is that only part of it has to be within range two. So you can kind of extend it out a little bit. But none of it can be within range two of an enemy ship. So. There's your restrictions on the cloak mines. So they, they have a very large range they have to be set aside. And, uh, but they also have a range, so they hit anything within range one of the token. And you place the token in any, any orientation you want. So that's um, where and how the cloak mines work. So most people put the cloak mines on a, sacri on a small sacrificial ship. They just fly straight out drop the cloak mines, and then the ship kind of runs and hides or just dies or something like that. Um, because they, they realize it's during the planning phase, so you got to be pretty aggressive with these the turn before you set them out. So and you might have a lone ship saying, hanging out there in the middle of nowhere, easily to be destroyed. And this also has the additional um, ability that if they have a scan action, they can, take, they can take the scan that turn and reduce the damage by one. So... That's something that doesn't happen on the other two. But then the other two only roll. Oh, oh no. So that's the, that's the only one that you can reduce the damage on. So that's, that's really nice. Um, well, I guess cloak mines aren't really big around here where I play, but I keep reading that they're a big bane in a lot of areas. But they're not that hard to deal with. You just have to spend a turn. You just have to be flexible enough to be defensive. Because if you've got someone out placed at range 2, you can change your dial to make a sharp 2 turn, and you will avoid it. But then, you know, you're going to be out of position for attack, and that's when in the turn you're going to use your defensive abilities. So having both offensive and defensive abilities is a good counter to the cloak mines, because now you can survive a turn, get re repositioned, and re-engage re re the attack into the part of the field without cloak mines in it. So usually, as I said, the cloak mines go on a cheap ship, Low captain skill, something that's sacrificial, will we'll jet out into the front and drop the cloak mines in front of your opponent uh, as soon as possible. So those are the cloak mines and when they're good. Now the other two are a little more complex. 
So the nuclear warheads is in action. So it's used during the activation phase. And that's when you deploy the warheads is during the activation phase. So this you want on relatively low captain skill. So this can basically go on any ship. Um, that isn't probably a nine. Because then during after you move, activate it, and then you can drop the tokens. Again, as long as no token is within your front firing arc, you can be at range one. So, you know, all the way out to here. As long as at least some part of the token is in range one and not and none of the token is within your front firing arc. So it's kind of like a mini attack. Also, you cannot put it on top of another ship, which is the only one which is which really makes a difference between anti mines. You can't just drop it on somebody and take damage. But you can pop it right in front of them. So when they move, they'll still go through the minefield. So um, that's again really nice. Uh, diff completely different tactic, completely different ship than you would use on the cloak mines. Here you'd want something that's actually going to be one of your main ships. You could add this to it for three points or four if you're playing factual penalty and give you an additional ability. Say if you fly by something, you can drop it behind you to the side to try and do damage and create an area of, of problems for your opponent around your ship. And it is a weapon instead of a tech like the cloak mines. And again, it does three damage, but there's no scan token reduction. So these are really good and can be really great, especially if you're out of position and take a turn, you need to remaneuver. You drop the nuclear, the nuclear warhead on somebody right in front of them, so it hasn't moved yet. So you want this on a medium to low skill captain. And so you can drop this in uh, in front of them. I think my friend, opponent was playing that wrong because it happens at the end of the activation phase, so it's after everyone's moved. That they that they come out, but again you can still drop them in front of somebody um, for the for them to take damage next turn. So uh, yeah, you can't do it this turn. You drop them, they won't take any damage. But next turn, this is almost going to be impossible to avoid because you can put this literally right in front of somebody's ship. So they have no choice to uh, but to take damage, which is really nice. So these can really mess with somebody when they least expect it, especially late game. Everyone's taking damage already. Drop this in front of them. Get those three free attacks uh, that that you get no defense against, and uh, it can be really annoying. So the last type of mine is the antimatter mine, and this differentiates itself from the other two because it is an attack. So it happens during your attack phase instead of your normal attack, and can only be used out of your rear firing arc, which is why I use the Equinox because it happens to have a rear firing arc. So again, it has to be range one. So again, anything like, you know, with, and at least partially within your front firing arc. And this one, unlike the others, you can drop just right on top of somebody's ship and say, you're gonna roll, I'm gonna roll four dice and you're gonna take damage from them. So this is really a very potent card with a lot of restrictions. You just have to get in just the right position to use them. And again, these are better used for the high captain skill because they're in attacks. So you want to go first. You want to drop this on. Maybe you can get a crit that says, you know, get a stunned helmsman. And they can't attack this turn. Something like that. Or uh, maybe even if they're already damaged late game, a good chance of taking somebody out. Or a chance of taking somebody out. So, but again, this is an attack, which means, okay. So those are the three mines. So let's talk about modifiers to mines. First of all, um, you don't get any defense dice. The only way to reduce damage is the cloak mines and the scan token. It goes from four to three. No, three to two, sorry. But they have a range, so that's kind of nice. <clears throat> and so what can affect these things? Um, <clears throat> basically, for the nuclear warhead and the cloak mines, since they happen during movement and activation, um, the only thing that will affect these are passive abilities, such as um, Denatra's plus one attack, uh, Crewman Wars rerolls, um, things along those lines that, are, that don't require an action, don't require a token, because you can't use any tokens on these either, because you can't use tokens during the activation phase. 
However, the any manner mines can be modified by anything that modifies an attack. Scotty, Gowron, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, Bohica, anything that can modify an attack, change blanks to hits, hits to crits, um, anything like that, because it is an attack. It's no different than, say, a photon torpedo. So these are really, really potent as far as getting damage done to your, when you drop, your, drop them on your opponent. No defense dice, easily modified, very dangerous, very hard to use. Um, much harder to use than the other ones because you have to be, I have to have a refiring arc, which not all ships have, and you have to have, um, be in the right position to do so. And you have to have a high enough captain skill where your ship doesn't get blown up before you get to drop these out. So, I think I've just about covered everything that matters with the the mines. And <clears throat> don't be afraid to add mines into your fleets, especially these two. are definitely can just be added to any ship to provide a little extra damage, a little extra twist to your attacks and your fleet. Uh, and give you a lot of options where normally you probably wouldn't have any. The cloak mines are generally used on a more specific build, a very specific ship designed just to drop out the cloak mines. Um, and then hoping that the cloak mines do a lot of damage to your opponent. Or at least clear an area where it forces them to move away and then you can attack while they're getting repositioned. So there's another good use of the cloak mines. So overall, mines are a very, very uh, interesting part of Star Trek Attack Wing. They're very... Uh, flavorful because everything in here are all came from the show one episode or another and especially this nuclear warhead of course came from the balance of terror the cloak mines are from ds9 and uh what guarded the wormhole and their mines and just, just constantly talking about mines in star trek and they all give different strategies all require different tactics all require different builds and just provide a lot of different ways uh, to play the game. I think it's really exciting. And they are potent, they are dangerous, especially to cloak ships. That's where mines really come in. Because around here there's a lot of people that play cloak. So getting mines out there, they can bypass defense dice. And is really, really good against a, a cloak heavy, cloak dependent fleet. So that's about all I have to say about mines. Uh, again, don't be afraid to use them. Even the cloak mines, even though a lot of people consider them douchey, using one or two, one, one cloak mine isn't going to really break the game. Um, and if you combine them with the other mine types, uh, you get a lot of flavor, you get a lot of options, and generally um, have a lot of fun uh, trying new ways to damage your opponent. You may or may not expect. So that's it, and thanks for watching. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them before, below.